Hi, it's Mel from Ultima Oski. I'm here today to talk about urinalysis. As you know, this is a new clinical skill that's coming up in the NMC Oski. So this is just a brief overview today um, about what this clinical skill means and how it might appear to you in the Oski. Um, and it's also an opportunity for you to ask questions and get a little bit more information. Because this is uh, quite a broad topic, I'm covering today about the ins and outs of urinalysis. If you want some more information, I'm going to put a slideshow on the WhatsApp group and I will also try to attach it as a PDF onto the Facebook group. Okay, which uh, I'll try to do that. I'm sure I'll manage it. Okay, so urinalysis is a chemical means of detecting abnormalities in urine. Um, and it's a clinical skill that brings us into contact with bodily fluids. So I will be observing um, correct infection control precautions if I do this OSCE by wearing an apron to protect my uniform from any splashes and wearing gloves as well, gelling my hands before and afterwards as they're both points of hand hygiene uh, and I can just decontaminate them with um, hand gel like this. Okay, um, so I will just give you a quick overview of the possible samples that you might come across in your OSCE. Okay, so we are first of all going to be um, sampling probably with a multi stick such as Combi Screen um, as part of your requirement to make sure your equipment is sound and working. Um, you should be checking the date, the expiry date on it. You should be making sure that the box where the strips come in is sealed. And, um, and it has only been opened for as per manufacturer um, recommendations. So usually these aren't allowed to be open more than a month or three months. Um, but you can read that on the side of the box. Um, okay, so as you know, there's lots of samples here that give different readings um, for the urine I'm testing. I'm going to put a little menu on if you want to practice this at home or if you're a clinical OSCE trainer and you, you're watching this and need a bit of help. Um, it's just like a, a little, uh, what would I say, menu for making um, different um, boxes illuminate on the strip. Okay, so to make it easier today, we're just going to do one sample and we're going to pick uh, sample D, which I have to look at, which is a protein urea. Okay, so this sample has been made up to uh, mimic urine that has got uh, protein in it. Okay, so we'll move that sample forward. I'll move these ones back. I am going to already check the date of my multi-stick box. I'm making sure it's been kept as per manufacturer's instructions. Um, by a sink. I'm going to get the strip out. I'm going to place it on my um, tissue. I'm now going to look at what normal looks like. So every uh, multi-stick or combi stick container has the normal range of what you'd expect to see if the urine did not have any abnormalities in it, um, which it's very hard to see. Um, so I'm going to post the pictures of the different urine strips and what they look like up on um, this is just an example of the polyurea or of the uh, protein urea one um, on the whatsapp group so you can see okay so you've got a bit of a better understanding okay thanks right so this is an abnormal um, as I said protein urea um, sample and that's what it's going to look like that strip down there is going to be what the abnormal strip should look like, okay? So the first thing we do when assessing urine is we look visually and we make a note of any abnormalities. So this one's a tiny bit cloudy. If you look at some of the hematuria one, um, that's been dyed. So if you look at that, you can see it's bloody in colour. Um, so it's obvious hematuria. And that is something you'd make a note of. On, your, on the description, your visual description of what a urine looks like for your ski. Um, I then take the sample, being careful not to use any splashes. 
I'm going to submerge my strip fully into the urine and now I'm going to leave it on my tissue, my absorbent tissue and I'm going to leave it for two minutes before I actually read it as per manufacturer's instructions sample D there and I'm counting down my two minutes now I'm going to pretend my two minutes has elapsed and to make it easier for you to see what I'm actually going to do sorry is I'll, I will be holding my strip after the two minutes has elapsed against my vial but you're not going to be able to see that at home so if you look at this as I hold my strip against the vial you see the light sorry I'm trying to make sure it doesn't catch and you notice that the marker for protein which is in the middle has illuminated a dark green color so that means there's protein in my urine so I am going to write down all the parameters so if you see on the side you've got leukocytes you've got um, protein bilirubin whatever I'm going to write down that the protein has been detected and the indication for protein being detected is usually renal disease, uh, sometimes diabetes, high blood pressure um, where you've got protein leaking go uh, in the kidneys um, into the urine um, but I'd write that down on the sheet and then after I'd recorded my urinalysis written the description and any abnormalities detected in the urine I would then dispose of uh, my urine samples as required so I'd obviously be putting that into a yellow bin to, main, uh, to maintain infection control and I will be washing my hands, removing my apron and sending the sample to the lab if appropriate that's what I would verbalise to my OSCE examiner if I did have to discard the sample um, I will make sure as well that it will be discarded appropriately in um, clinical waste. Okay, thanks, that smell Oski. As I said, I'm going to put some of this information about your analysis and the slideshow over on Oski WhatsApp and also try and put it on the Facebook group. If you've got any comments or questions and you're watching on YouTube, just comment below and I will, um, I'll answer them. Okay, nice speaking to you. See you soon, bye.